Hi, again, this is uh, the, the course Electrical Systems in Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering. And uh, the topic is on uh, renewable energy, uh, the first part. And this is lecture seven in the series of lectures. Uh, first off in the discussion is the power generated from hydropower. And the Philippines has a formidable number of this installed in various locations of the country. It is a boon that the country is located near the equator. Thus, the, the setting is tropical. And with such, the country is experiencing um, ample rainfall uh, almost year round. So uh, it is a, a, a uh, it allows the country to uh, harness the power potential of water at, at, at a certain height. Okay. Now the topic on um, hydropower or the whole topic of renewables will span a week. Thus the, the detailed uh, assessment, design and layout, construction and operation of a hydropower plant are disregarded because that altogether uh, is a, a topic that could uh, that would cover a whole semester of, of coursework. Now, the generic operation of a uh, hydropower plant will be discussed in, in passing, and we will focus merely on the uh, electricity generation. Now, a hydropower plant, as shown in figure one, okay, it operates by virtue of one of the uh, of any kinds or, or one of the kinds of turbines available commercially and um, or probably a combination of, of thereof. Now there are three, there are the three mo most common are the uh, Francis, uh, the Pelton and the Cape Plan turbines. Now in a Cape Plan as shown in, uh, in uh, figure two, we have the water, okay? The water flowing diagonally will go through the uh, turbine blades. And that now, the heating of the, the blades by the water uh, will propel the turbine, propel the turbine and it, it will rotate. Now the force and accompanying pressure of the, uh, that the turbines uh, ex experiences is, uh, due to the head or the height of the water. Uh, and we know that uh, in, in the physics, okay, water levels to a, the bottom of a certain topography. And now in, in uh, hydropower, thus it is important to have water at a uh, considerable height compared to where the uh, energy will be harnessed. Okay. Okay, so the that height is actually what we were referring to as the head of the uh, head of the the head of the uh, uh, water, okay, the water level, and it is this potential energy that drives a turb turbine, uh, which is then connected to a generator to convert the rotary movement of the turbine into electricity. Now, unlike in conventional power plants. Uh, this, the turbines, okay, they are powered in hydropower plants, the turbines are powered by uh, liquid water. In, in non-conventional, we have, or in, in the conventional, we have uh, steam to power the turbines. Okay, let's go to the operation of a hydropower plant. We have here a cross-sectional schematic of, of, the, of a plant, okay? And this is um, figure three, okay? To the right is the water reservoir. This reservoir is usually at the upper location of a stream network where there is a collection of water, okay? This is, this is uh, the importance of damming rivers, okay? The, we store the we store the water, okay? And 
the water is released by uh, uh, gates, as in the given figure, it's called the sluice gate. Okay, the water enters the uh, penstock, where at the bottom of it is the turbine to receive the uh, water that is going down by uh, uh, by uh, by uh, the by gravity. Okay, so uh, the the water will be flowing with a fixed mass flow rate. And the mass flow propels down the turbines, which from figure two is connected to a shaft running a generator uh, that uh, almost almost same kinds of gener same same kind of generator used in conventional power plants. And uh, the once the mechanical power is converted to electrical, okay, the electricity is. Uh, uh, enters the grid okay, via the powerhouse of the uh, hydropower plant. Okay, now the water exits into the same uh, path that the original water uh, was is is going to go to. Okay, and it would actually be dependent on the uh, water network. Okay, uh, and and other considerations like uh, in 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 other in, in in cases specific cases water in dams can be used to uh, supply the uh, requirements for drinking of certain areas like in in Manila we have the angat dam supplying um, water to metro manila okay particularly the eastern portion oh no sorry the, the yeah the eastern portion along with the ipo and la mesa dams it is also cons uh, considered, it's important to consider the, um, the ecosystem in designing of dams because we, well, the ecosystem would have um, organisms, populations of, for example, migratory fishes that uh, could be displaced or could be um, um, uh, affected by the uh, 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 changes in the landscape, okay, particularly in the river network. Now, in the uh, setup of a uh, power plant, the powerhouse, okay, and the pen stuck, okay, they are in uh, closed channels, but uh, in 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 other cases, an open channel can, can be used. And in here, we have an open channel used to uh, connect a portion of the water, uh, the original river network, uh, to allow the, uh, the other the organisms, such as fishes, okay, to go to, to, to pass through the same water um, network without going through the uh, the system or the hydropower plant we, we the, the the fishes would be a uh, would get stuck in the turbines if ever okay so the the turbines are secured in the premises of the powerhouse and there are types of tur uh, hydropower plants where water is not dams uh, in not, not dammed okay and there are also uh, various sizes for this such as the 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 big the pico the micro the small and um, the large ones okay as to the power available in hydropower plants equation uh, one is used to quantify the amount of electricity available or power okay we have the equation mg h net times um n or or that would be nu where M is the mass flow rate in kilograms per second, okay, the potential energy, if uh, recalling from physics, is a function of gravity. The more mass or volume of water contained, the more energy available. And the volume identified by the height of the water is actually the level of the water from, uh, well, to the level of power generation. So the, the height, the difference of that. 
Okay, thus the, the higher the head or the height, the higher the generating capacity of a hydro power plant. Another renewable source of energy is wind, and this is also turbines. Uh, bit, these are turb uh, wind turbines uh, and different in the make and construction uh, compared to uh, water turbines. There are two main categories of wind turbines, the, the horizontal and the vertical axis or the horizontal axis wind turbine and a vertical axis wind turbine. Now they're, they're shortened to POTS and then POTS. Uh, here in shown in the picture in, in, in Hawaii are uh, horizontal axis wind turbines or HOTS. Okay? The axis of the blades in HOTS is parallel to the uh, wind flow. Okay? To the wind flow. Now, the vertical axis wind turbines or VOTS have the axis of the blades perpendicular to the um, wind steam, as can be shown in figure number six. Now, this is just a 3D representation for a, uh, a type of uh, VOT. This is the Darius H rotor vertical axis wind turbine. Now, there, are, there is also the Savonius, uh, which will be shown, shown later. It's the drag type. So this this show those, this one shown is the, um, the Darius is the um, lift type. Now in figure seven, uh, the aerodynamics wind flow through a vault is shown, okay? And you will see, or, or is, it is shown that the wind passing through the blades, okay? Uh, is, is powering the rotation of the, the, the turbines via the lifting of the blades. Uh, this is, or this was done using uh, engineering simulations, and uh, this has been the the manner to uh, study, okay? Because it would be very expensive to uh, conduct research using um, in situ, okay? Or actual uh, setup of uh, wind turbines. Similar to water turbines, wind turbines uh, rotate a shaft, and for the hot, the shaft is inside a nacelle uh, where the slow shaft rotation is sped up with a uh, gearbox. A difference with hots and bouts is that the former needs a pitching and yawing uh, system to position the blades, okay, the turbines, okay, the blades along the wind direction. Now, the volts can accept wind from any direction. So there's no need for this uh, pitching and yawing uh, system. Another bit uh, difference between the two is with regards to performance as HOTS uh, require higher wind speeds while the VOTS operate even in low speeds. The Zabonius again is the drag type while the Darius is the lift type, okay? Uh, the, the, there are many differences among the different uh, wind turbines, besides among the mix and the designs of commercially available ones, but the electrical power generated through follows a single formula, and that is uh, shown. Uh, the wind power is one half rho AV uh, cube, okay? okay? Where the power is influenced by the, uh, uh, what, the, the, uh, the wetted area or the the, the uh, actual area um, of wind okay, passing through the turbine. We have here the formula. Okay, the P is also affected by the what performance coefficient, the CP, and the efficiencies of the generator and the gearbox. So uh, you have here the the wind velocity. Uh, the swept area, okay. I was referring it a while ago as the sweat, wetted area. It's a swept area. So, and also we have the wind velocity, the uh, wind density, okay, the performance of the wind turbine, and then the, the other efficiency of the generator and the grid boxes. Uh, the CP, okay, is um, 
is actually a performance coefficient. Now, uh, this could easily compare the different uh, types of, of wind turbines. And the HOTS, that's why they are now being commercially available or uh, made and uh, actively uh, supporting the energy needs for most countries, okay? It's because they have higher CP's uh, performance coefficients than most, um, like the, for example, the multi-bladed uh, wind turbine, okay? And also the, the VOTS. Right, so solar is another non-conventional energy source. Uh, but while we will be discussing biomass and biofuels in the next next year, okay, we will end with our discussion here because biomass and biofuels actually operate very much similar to the petroleum-based or the non -con or the conventional power plants. In fact, the diesel and the, uh, the diesel and the uh, gasoline Okay, engines, okay, which are similar in operation to power plants, they were first okay, uh, made to run on peanut oil and ethanol, respectively. Now, biomass and biofuels only differ in the heating value, okay, heating value of that, that material, since the combustion process, okay, since the combustion process, which still may vary. Uh, per fuel because of the different chemical components. Still, it's the same combustion process. Now, geothermal also is considered renewable, but still somehow questionable. And also, again, they operate very much the same way with conventional energy sources. So for solar, discussion will focus on our uh, the, the, the use of photovoltaics, okay, the photovoltaics to power our or to generate electricity. And a photovoltaic cell operates via the photovoltaic effect, which uh, is, is the just the actually the excitement of the silicon uh, electrons, okay, to move through a circuit because of the uh, solar radiation, the photons from the solar radiation. The sun emits photons, which excites this uh, silicon electrons from the N type, okay, from the N type to the, uh, the, the, the N type is a plate, okay, and then uh, to the plate on the other side, which is the P type. This is actually uh, producing the recurrent, okay? The recurrent, which will need to be converted to AC before it can be used uh, for AC equipment, okay? Or it could be also fed to the grid. The electricity of solar panels is limited to the amount a panel can produce, and the average efficiency of commercially available panels is around 10 to 20 percent, meaning only 10 to 20 percent of the incident radiation, okay, the incident radiation is actually the available one is 1,363 watts per meter squared. That is the solar constant, and since only 10 percent, okay, 10 to 20 percent is um, is made available as electricity, the the rest is uh, uh, dissipated as heat, okay, to the environment and also to the to the since it's 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 absorbed, okay. So some researchers have already produced panels with efficiencies as high as around 48%, but the actual concern of solar panels is the high intensive uh, energy, uh, high and highly intensive energy um, production to make, to, to produce this uh, solar cells. And uh, in, that, in, in that way, uh, it, there's a, uh, way, there's, there's a need to look into the life cycle analysis of this, this industry. Uh, electricity generated in solar panels is also dependent on the uh, location, particularly the geography and the uh, geographic positioning, uh, the foliage in the, in the vicinity, the, the clouds, so the weather and the climate, 
it is best to orient also the panels along the uh, uh, as, as, as such that the uh, solar radiation is available throughout the day. Thus, if, if we know that the sun moves from east to west, so uh, gable roofs okay, that are oriented north to south would receive only half of the sunlight uh, throughout the day. Uh, there are also cases where you have the uh, electricity distributors, okay? which which accepts or 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 can can receive the excess electricity from a solar power producer okay, even homes uh, so that these can be fed to the grid and used by other uh, consumers and some even pay these consumers in what is called a uh, net metering policy now besides solar panels uh, there's a need for for a main panel, which is uh, could be the or, or the charge controller, and an invent inverter. Okay. Now for for standalone setups of solar panels, there's a need for for the installation of a battery. Okay, this battery should uh, save energy or save the electricity for use during cloudy days and also during uh, or at night. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the, uh, here is the look at the uh, best research solar cells available uh, or, or, or as researched by different um, companies and um, universities. You can see here the, the start, okay, from, this is from 1970s, uh, actually exactly 1976, on through, on to um, 2020, where we see some, some uh, research cells uh, reaching 47.1% in efficiency of uh, uh, receiving okay, radiation. So this is a, a, a very viable area for research, particularly in uh, the material science field, because uh, there's a lot or clamor for high, uh, high efficiency cells, Okay, and well, the again the concern on the highly intensive and uh, energy use in during the production for for of solar cells. So this is uh, where we end, and next topic could be on um, the biomass and the biofuels. Although a short discussion on um, sizing for solar cells would be uh, discussed also in the next lecture. I'll be seeing you by then. Thank you for listening and and uh, please do take care.